Well, the process works, you know, when uh, the agency and our team actually starts talking about what are the objectives for the campaign and they look at the actual assets, video assets, either together with the media agency or the media agency, the creative agency. And based on those objectives, what are, you know, if, if they want to see a longer version of it, or if there are more assets or B-rolls that they want to get into, or actually being able to browse through products, what happens is the team then works consultative with our clients to actually create what we would call a best-in-class interactive video that actually uses the fourth sensation of video, which is now the touch, the enabling of actually engaging with it and going deeper into the content. So instead of having just a passive video where it comes over you and it tells you a story, the viewer can then actually choose to interact and be part of that story in some form or fashion, either through shopping in it or through actually interacting with it or socializing with it. The end goal for us, right, is obviously to have a person want to engage with the brand for longer than 15 or 30 seconds because we believe that video is very much in that mid funnel, right, all about enabling people to get inspired, opening up their horizons, right, and then if you enable them to imagine more then, and they spend more time with your brand, we believe that can only be good for the brand, right? It can only increase purchase intent, it can only increase familiarity, and, and at the end, hopefully convert into more sales for the brand. It's fascinating. I've been now with the company for over two years, and when I first came, and I remember everybody telling me about this interactive engaging unit, right? Our CP, cost per engagement unit. It was very niche, very little people were doing it. Some of our really, really smart, talented colleagues were able to sell it in, but a lot of agencies and marketers were not really ready for that. Today, it's a much bigger portion of the sale. And while I can't necessarily comment on the breakout of it, um, it is a substantial growing part of our business. And we very much have put our stake forward when we said, you know, it's not going to be just now about whether people engage with you at Interactive, interact with it, but also if they want to actually just get a complete or if they want to get a cost per shift. So we've basically learned a lot from that and expanded those options to not just interact with the ad, but also do other actions with the ad and then create a business model around that. Um, it's, it's been a staggering success and it's not just on desktop. It's now on mobile devices and tablets and, and it's coming to smart TVs as well. You know, the best that I can, I can think of in the holiday season, there were some fantastic fashion retailers who actually created ads where a person, after seeing the video, could actually have a lookbook and actually browse and shop through all of the products or all of the fashion items they wanted to buy. Our studios enable people to actually see an extended trailer. If they want to see a five minute or 10 minute trailer, they enable them to engage with the movie. So you've got a range of marketers that actually are using it in a wide range. It's not just about having a social button or having a YouTube video. It's all about what that campaign really can drive and if that campaign has additional footage or storytelling capabilities that will engage people to interact with brands longer than the 30 seconds. So we want to make everything as much transparent, transparent as possible. So the first step for us was to actually go to the MRC and get average viewability accredited so that as the first ones, we can actually show people was the video actually seen and for you know, how much of that video was seen. Um, and in addition to that, Video Hub enables people to actually see clearly what drives a person to actually interact with the video. It could be in some cases that it's also publisher driven and the content around it. But sometimes it's simply time of day, day of week. It could be simply the operating system. So we provide an ability for people to understand what are the main factors that a person actually chose to A, watch the ad, complete the ad, and interact with the ad, meaning engage with it and spend more time with it. And instead of drowning you with, you know, these are all the 15 items you should know about the ad, we drive it to what are the top three main assets, right, that are actually making the ad either work well or not work well. So it provides that ability. And then for the traditional marketers, which we still have, right, in video, we provide them with a GRP equivalent, right, through Nielsen OCR or through our friends at Comscore with VC and enable them to actually make it equivalent to their television buy, which is very important to them. So it's really, you know, working with them hand in hand. In some cases, Andy, we'll do with them, you know, custom projects where we can actually prove either what it did for their tune-in to a television show or what it did to their sales. And those are, you know, very case-by-case -case specific.
things, but for all of our advertisers, they have full transparency in seeing what actually drives success for that particular portion. The interesting part was, and you asked me, you know, why is interactive video that much better or is it better? Or can you actually prove if it's better? And one of the things that we've done for the past few years is simply measure the difference between people like you and me who just get a pre-roll and watch it on any device versus a person who chooses to watch it and actually engages with it. With it. And the difference is interesting. What we saw is an 8% lift between people who just watch the ads and increase their you know, intent to purchase of that particular brand versus people who actually watched and engaged with it. And just to put it in context for you, if you look at like tracking numbers from Ipsos and Milwaukee Brown, just national brands all around in terms of what television does in terms of intent to purchase, that's on average 2%. With interactive video, engaging video, it can go up eight percentage points. And that was really a significant finding. And we keep tracking that every single day, every campaign that's engaging to understand how that over time changes. Because we want to see if there's a honeymoon phase, meaning is it like a novelty or is it something that we can sustain with, the, with technology? And so far, it's been relatively stable. And obviously, there are differences between categories. So categories like beauty, right? You think about it if you're talking about makeup, if you're talking about, you know, beautiful people, it's a very high engagement and therefore we see a much higher intent to purchase. And some categories are a little bit more blasé, they're not necessarily as exciting and so the intent to purchase is a little bit lower. But on average, across all categories, it's 8 percentage points.